Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica in and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at how to fit an entire year into a 160 page notebook. Although that probably seems oddly specific, that's the typical size of the A5 Archer and Olive notebooks which is my journal of choice. But that being said, the tips that we go through in this video are going to apply for any journal that you're trying to fit a full year in. Along with how to plan your journal so that you can fit the whole year in, we're also going to talk through some space saving or space maximizing tips. But without further ado, let's get into it. The first point of call, if you're looking to plan a journal that fits an entire year, is to consider how many pages you'll be setting aside for each month. This works on the assumption that each month takes up roughly the same number of pages on average, and it gives you a good idea as to whether this goal is actually going to be achievable for you. Taking the 160 page journal and dividing this into 12 months, this gives us 13 pages per month with 4 pages left over for any start of year setups or other collections. If in planning your journal, you know that there's a certain number of pages you want in your start of journal setup, you just need to subtract that from the total number of pages and then divide what remains by 12 to figure out how much space you'll have per month. For instance, Let's say that you wanted to have 10 pages for your initial journal setup, so things like the future log, annual trackers, etc. You'd then have 150 pages left, so 12 pages per month, with 6 pages remaining for other collections, or as extra pages for any given month. Once you know how many pages you're going to have available to you per month on average, it's then time to consider what those pages are going to be used for. Most people like to have a monthly log and possibly a tracker of some description each month, possibly more, but if you're trying to fit an entire year in one journal, it's good to make sure you consider what you actually want or need. If you are looking for more ideas on what to include in a monthly setup though, I do have a separate video of monthly layout ideas linked in the description box below. When planning the pages of your monthly setup, make sure to also account for any weekly logs or daily logs that you intend on having and how many pages those are going to take up. Based on a calculation of having a spread or two pages per week, and with each month having between four and five full weeks in it, that will be eight to ten of your allocated pages per month. If we consider having 13 pages per month, that's only three pages remaining to put in things like your monthly log, any trackers you want, or any other collections. Once you've done this pre-planning though, you'll have a much better idea of how much space you have in your journal for certain things. Now you just have to make sure you stick to those guidelines that you set for yourself. What could be a good idea is to either pencil in a reminder for when the new month will be starting, or putting in a sticky note, just to help you be mindful of the number of pages that you're using. Of course, we did these calculations based on an average number of pages per month, so you may end up using a little more or a little less, but having these guides in the journal already just safeguards yourself from using too many pages and then running out before the year's over. Other things that can be helpful in trying to fit a full year into one journal is to firstly consider which journal you're using. As mentioned, my favourites are the Archer and Olive A5 notebooks, but they also do have B5 sizes, which offer much more room per page, allowing you to fit more things in on each page. And they've also got the 192 page journals. This would bring your number of pages per month up to 16, which may work better for you if you want to do more layouts per month. Sticking with the 160 page A5 though, layouts that allow you to save space or maximize space are really helpful. One tip with regards to this is that if you're doing regular list style daily or weekly logs, you can divide each page in half lengthways to make four columns of tasks per spread, rather than just two. This effectively doubles the number of tasks or items that you can record per page. By maximizing your use of the space available, you'll save yourself from using more pages than you otherwise needed to. Another tip is with regards to the monthly log. While the calendar style is a favorite for a lot of people, this often takes up a full spread, or two pages. A space-saving version of this is the vertical style monthly log, which just has the numbers listed down the left-hand side of one page. Another space saving technique is with regards to habit tracking. Here you can see I have one page dedicated to tracking 12 habits by using the mini calendar style. But if you were to instead do the vertical style habit tracker, 
This has the potential to take up only 12 columns of boxes on a page, leaving you the rest of the page to do something else with. I also have some useful videos related to habit trackers and combo trackers, which would be worth checking out with regards to this. You can also find those ones linked in the description box below. When it comes to weekly spreads, one way to save space with these is to use one page weeklies, rather than weeklies that take up a full spread. This will cut down the number of pages you use each month for those weeklies, from 8 or 10 down to 4 or 5, so allowing much more room for other layouts. Of course, you can always just limit the amount of things you're writing down, but that's not necessarily an ideal solution. So if you do still have quite a bit that you need to record in your journal, our next tip may be better suited for you. This one isn't so much about space saving, but more about making more space, and that is to use tip-ins. A tip-in is just an extra piece of paper that you stick into your journal in such a way that it still allows you to use the page underneath it. For this tip-in, I've just taken a piece of the white dock grid paper from my Archer and Olive notepad, and I'm securing it to the journal with washi tape, such that it essentially becomes an extra page in the journal. I'm honestly thinking that I might have to use this trick for December, because the pages of my current journal are quickly running out. <laughs> Question of the day for you though, how many journals do you typically use in a year? Mine normally last me about six months, but I'm somewhat considering seeing if I wouldn't be more comfortable in using more journals next year, just to kind of give myself a bit more freedom to do non-productivity related pages. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. As always though team, thank you for watching. If you found today's video helpful or just interesting, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity and personal development. Until next time, bye.